The first stereotypical party experience I ever had was a party that I went to at Carrie Fisher's house where I actually saw Billy Lord as a tiny baby in the nursery. And then I was surrounded by everybody with celebrity and it was so incredible. And uh, Harrison Ford was holding three glasses of wine and he walked over and he tripped and he spilled all three glasses down my front and then he was trying to wipe it off but then realized that, oh, I can't really do that. So then he was like, oh, uh, so he may be Indiana Jones and Han Solo, but he's not in totally infallible. He cannot carry three glasses of wine at one time and walk on an uneven surface. Hey, Logo, this is Margaret Cho, and this is First Best Worst. The first stand-up show I ever attended was Ellen DeGeneres and Will Durst in San Francisco, probably 1981, something like that. My first time doing stand-up uh, was in, um, I believe, 1982, and then I did another one in 1984. I remember that it was really interesting because I got work right away, you know, and I got like the club owner kind of pulled me aside and said, oh, you know, here are these these days. It was upstairs from my parents' bookstore. So it was like kind of during a shift that I was already working. I was able to continue doing stand up comedy just because they saw potential in me and I was able to do many, many shows after that. Gosh, there's so many worse stand-up bombings. A problem that I have where I, if I'm not doing well, I will really make sure it's awful for everyone. So there's countless times where this has happened, but really, you know, for me, it's just a triumph. If I can't kill, I'll make you wanna die. That's basically my motto. There was one that was so badly done that was my fault that was in Scotland that was so bad that um, after the show, my friends Amanda Palmer and Neil Gaiman, who were also there, rented me a horse and carriage. They actually got a horse and carriage to take me home. They sat on either side so I wouldn't jump out of the horse and carriage and uh, bundled me through the sleet. It was almost like a, a Grimm's fairy tale. It was giving Grimm's. It was giving really the scary original fairy tales. Bombing is really important as a stand-up comedian because you need to know your parameters. It kind of keeps you in the borders of what is the art form because if you uh, don't have the capacity to bomb, then you don't know how far out you can get. So I think it's actually important and often the very best comedians bomb continually and constantly because we're always reaching for the stars. The first comedian I ever looked up to was Joan Rivers. She was great. She was a pioneer. She was my mentor and my friend. The best way to get inspired to write new jokes is menopause because you forget everything that you wrote before and then you have to start over. So I think it's actually great to forget things because you can reinvent and realize I'm just going to keep going because I can't remember anything. The worst job I ever had was, I think probably being a Raggedy Ann at FAO Schwartz. It was a terrible job. Children are, t I hate children. It was a terrible job because, you know, you get like uh, abused by these brats and they were like yelling at me, uh, saying there's no way that Raggedy Ann can be Chinese. And I was really offended. <laughs> the kids are really a nightmare. So I, I don't like working with children and I, I didn't like working uh, at that store. The best part about getting back on the road is seeing people to actually perform live, to actually be at live shows, to actually experience an audience. It's really, there's nothing like it. And it's just so special to reconnect with people who have come to see me time and time again. So I love that. We have such a great time. And so for me, it's really, really special. The best way to spend a day off on tour is to eat laying down in bed in a hotel room because I'm never gonna do that in my house. But you know I'm gonna do that in a hotel. So that's my favorite way to spend a day off. The worst stand-up gig I ever performed at, it was standing uh, on a cafeteria table during lunch at a college and trying to do stand-up comedy to people trying to eat before class. Noon is a terrible time for stand-up comedy. The cafeteria is the worst place for stand-up comedy. So yeah, I would say stand-up during the daytime, it's iffy. Sometimes it can be great, but mostly uh, not. First thing that I would burn if I found out that I was gonna die tomorrow, I'm not really sure. I love to declutter. So there's a lot of things that I don't have anymore. The things that I'm most embarrassed about maybe people finding out are like ideas, thought concepts, philosophies. Those things can be burned. My best and favorite guilty pleasure is watching not only 90 Day Fiance, but all of the iterations. 
<laughs> I mean, I have Discovery Plus for a reason. I can watch that all day long. My favorite is Stacy and Darcy. I actually saw Stacy out on the street with uh, Florian. I stopped and I took a picture very creepily with my phone. I could have just gone up to them and said, can I take a picture? No, I had to do a creepy spy camera style weird photo, but I was so excited. It's not my first queer waking, but my first like really major experience um, in the gay world was probably a lesbian cruise to Alaska, which was so special and I had many affairs and I was young. Uh, I was uh, thrilled to be on a boat with 800 lesbians. Could you imagine? Like that's a, that's a lot of lesbians. It was really amazing. The first person I ever came out to oddly David Cross. I came out to David Cross when we were on an overnight drive shuttling from San Francisco to Los Angeles and I would not stop coming out to him for about eight hours. He really had it. He's like, I get it, you're gay. It's okay. Just, you know, like something easy like walking dogs. I'm outdoorsy, oddly. I'm active, odd, also oddly. And I have a great affection for animals. So to me, uh, meeting up at a park, not a dog park, but just a, a nice, uh, park and uh, going for a walk with your animals, if they have animals to me, is really ideal. My first date with a woman was also named Margaret, oddly. We went to the Cafe San Marcos. It was like the big lesbian bar in the 80s and, and 90s in San Francisco. And um, I can't remember really how that turned out. But she was she was very femme and uh, oddly named Margaret also. The worst date I've ever been on was not the fault of the person I was on a date with, but it uh, culminated in us being at a immersive theater experience where um, people were spinning around us with their hair braided together. So it's two people, one braid, sharing a braid. So they were like tied by their hair together, spinning. And then um, there was an MC at the show and, and he said, bring me a fat woman. I need a fat woman now. So they grabbed me and brought me to the front of the sort of center of the stage. It was immersive. And I had my period and it started to go gush down my legs because I was so stressed. I was wearing shorts. I was so stressed out that I tapped out of the date and I went home. The first time using a dating app, I uh, was spoiled for choice. I mean, because I am attracted to lots of different types of people, male, female, non-binary, gender fluid, trans. So th there's a lot of boxes to check. I found that being on dating apps is quite like a job because I'm going on so many dates, it's really exhausting. I c categorize myself now as asexual polyamorous. There's an app for that. I'm really pleased about it. The worst quality that I'm attracted to is probably know-it-all, people who know everything, because I think they know everything, but they really don't. People that claim to know everything don't know anything. But I do admire somebody who seemingly knows things. So I find that I'm easily swayed by people's faux intelligence. I think when you're dating women, there's a sense of power in womanhood. You really feel so incredibly free. There's true magic in womanhood and that extends to anybody who wants to identify as female that that power is palpable then the sort of like with heteronormative relationship there's a kind of socially acceptable quotient that that is imitated in film and there's a validation there that's hard to beat so it's hard to say which is better, but the advantage of being with female identifying people is feminism is real and the, the woman power is uh, enormous. The worst way to break up with someone is to ghost. I think ghosting is a little bit, it's a little immature. I actually love a text breakup. I think that's great. You know, why not? I have Lucia, who's my beautiful dog, Lucia Katarina, and I have my deaf cat, Sakoko Saudade. Then I have Sarong John Child, my other cat, and then my other, other cat, uh, Uju. They're all beautiful animals. I love them all for sp specific reasons. If I were to pick a favorite, it's Sarong. Sarong is the heartbeat of the house. She is the best in every way. She's the my favorite, my love. She's the cat of my dreams, except uh, for a few seconds every day when I have to put eardrops in her ears. I have to do that twice a day. And she is a nightmare. I actually have to put on like protective gear <laughs> to do it. But the, uh, the rest of the time, she's so great. The worst fashion or beauty trend 
I have fallen victim to is probably microblading only because I like the way that it looked, but the way that it faded was weird. And now my eyebrows are kind of orange, which um, made it really difficult to actually do the blonde eyebrow trend, which I kind of like. So I think, uh, yeah, any kind of permanent makeup, it's questionable just because I uh, don't always make the right choices. The best thing about getting older is that it's a lot of fun and that it's really like you are uh, so invested in life, but also not in the way that you were when you were younger. So there's less insecurity. There's less fear overall. You know, we uh, always just get to enjoy life now, which I think is really special. So getting older is great. The worst piece of advice I've ever received was uh, when taking a photograph, open your eyes. I, I They're oh, as open as they're going to get. I'm um, Asian. The best accomplishment of my career is that I have inspired an entire generation of young Asian American queer comedians to pursue their dreams. So that includes Joel Kim Booster and Bowen Yang and uh, all of these amazing, talented people are are there and doing it. And really, um, that's my greatest achievement is to inspire them.